Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to build this fantasy inspired guards house for your Minecraft world. Make sure to stick through the entire video so you can get the blueprints for this house and so I can teach you all the lessons I know so you can make incredible builds like this by yourself. Now let's get going. So I started off with identifying a really nice plot of land that this guard's house can sit on. And with the help of world edit and creative mode, I was able to lay out the land again, nice little flat area to work with. And then I started working out on mapping my perimeter so I get a good rough shape of the foundational layer of this house. Now that I've got the foundation in place, I can start setting up my structural supports. And I'm using, once again, strip spruce logs to keep in theme with the rest of the builds that are in the area. <laughs> yeah, and then just like any other semi-professional Minecraft YouTuber, you gotta know how to use the world edit mod, and I clearly don't. I've got a lot of work to do, and I clearly don't. So I resorted to doing it bare hand style. You know, gotta get the work done, I, I, got, I had to get it done. Now that I think we've gotten past my little self-embarrassment moment, I want you to take a really close look at the foundational layer of this house. And with medieval builds, it's always a stone foundational layer because they didn't really have all of the iron or concrete or stainless steel that you would expect nowadays in a modern build. And you're going to notice that we actually have added some gradients in through the use of stone brick and a site, regular stone, a little cobble. And this is to actually break it up a little more so it doesn't look as neat and trimmed. In the medieval times, these builds were in a lot rougher shape and had to endure quite a bit more. And just like what we did with the foundational layer, the walls of this house are also going to be incorporating the method of gradients. And our block palette for the walls is going to consist of white concrete powder and diorite blocks. If you were to look up different concepts for fantasy houses on the internet, you're going to see that they often cantilever the second floor out from the first, which essentially means that the second floor is bigger than the first. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And so I'm actually getting our foundation to be a little bigger than the first and getting the actual struts in place so this looks like it can actually support itself in real life. And if you beautiful people like this content and want to see more, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when more of this great content goes live. Now moving back to the build, I'm really trying to work on the front face sides of the walls. And I want to make them interesting and have a lot of points of interest. So I'm really trying to make sure that I can get some good features and I want to let some natural light in. So for example, at this window, I'm working real hard to make a grander sort of almost balcony like window, but you're not going to be able to walk through it. And I really like the arch that came together with the use of the spruce trap doors and stairs. And if you want to build this exact house in your own Minecraft world, well, head down to the description below and you'll see a Google Drive link that'll take you to the Lightmatica file that'll allow you to build this anywhere in your world. So I'm adding in this stone brick right here. This is going to act as like a little bit of fascia and trim for the build. And so the roof is going to be able to stand out more and hopefully it's going to contrast with our warped planks that we're going to be adding in. Small details in large quantities can really transform a build. Swinging around the back, I wanted to make a little balcony lookout, and so I added some trusses in to make a little flower bed, and I'm designing an arch right now with some window shutters and crown molding at the top, and I really like the way the top of the crown molding came out. With the use of the spruce trap doors, that was just... I was very, very happy with it. And coming around the front, you're going to see exactly what I mean about the use of our trim and fascia to help contrast the warped planks more. And we're going to get to work on this tower now. And I didn't want this tower to be within the same block palette as we've been using. I wanted a little differentiation, so I settled on some dark oak. 
Now, dark oak has a very, very rich chocolatey texture, so to prevent myself from going overboard with it, I decided to incorporate some spruce trapdoors and other spruce features periodically spaced throughout the tower. While I was building this tower, a priority of mine was to make sure to break up the walls so it wasn't so uniform and it had a little more texture to it. And you're going to notice right underneath where I'm building, we have what's called a belly band made out of spruce signs. And this is to act as if this were a horizontal spruce log to give it a little more structural integrity. Coming up on the tower now, so something I really wanted to do is start to cantilever this out by one block, similar to what we did with the second floor. And so that's what I'm doing, and I added in some dark oak as well as some spruce elements to break up the color palette of this area and make it a key feature so your eyes are slowly drawn towards the top of this peak. And through the use of offsetting my stairs, I was able to actually come up with this really cool window setup that I'm very, very happy with. It gives a very medieval look and a heavy, heavy crenellation vibe. And we're gonna add in this almost conical roof with a bit of a curvature, and that's gonna act as our cherry on the cake for the tower. And just to give the build a little more breathability in life as if someone was actually living there, I'm adding in some lights periodically, but not trying to go overboard. Unlike the other builds we've done in the series, I've actually added in some dark prismarine and warp stem blocks to create a gradient on the roof. Once I got the block palette down for our gradient on the roof, I went over to the chimney. And this chimney design took me a while to build, and I want to highlight that it's okay to take your time even on these smaller bits. Just getting the shape and curvature right of this took some time, but in the end, I am very happy with the results. And down below, I'm creating our main entrance for the guards to come in when they're coming in and out of their shifts. And going through, adding a little back patio that might lead to a training yard, or anything that your imagination might conjure up. The world is yours. Go play. And then we'll just finally add on this roof to our little backdoor entrance into the build. And look at that! Ladies and gentlemen, we have just finished this beautiful guards tower build. And if you like this content and want to see more, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when more great content like this goes live. Now let's roll the montage.